Our final speaker on this panel is Mr. Max Joseph. Max is a member of the Board of Directors at the newly founded Assyrian Policy Institute. He has written widely on issues confronting minoritized groups in the Middle East. His work has included presenting research within the European Parliament, detailing the security situation for minorities in the Nineveh Plain. He holds a bachelor's in philosophy and a master's in international public policy, where his thesis centered on addressing the Assyrian question in Iraq post-2003. Okay. Um, so I thought about how I should tackle this um, because I have a lot to say and there's too much to cram into 10 minutes. So I'll, I'll try and be brief and be more like list like and methodical than some of the things I want to say. Um, I'll begin by saying the KRG has a bit closer. Okay. Yeah, the KLG has never been in a more fragile state as it is today. Um, the referendum itself was an exclamation point at the end, the way I see it, at the end of a catalogue of irresponsible and destabilizing policies adopted by both the KLG and Western governments, as well as the uncovering of a political system shrouded for years by false stories of success, democracy, and prosperity. All of these threads have now been violently unwoven. The referendum was a tremendous failure, as a lot of people have now suggested on the panel as well I'm sitting on. Um, they've pointed to the loss of territory, the impoverishment of people, um, the insecurity, the brutality faced by ordinary citizens for expressing their anger. Um, the territories acquired by the KRG after the annihilation of ISIS as a territorial force have almost all been reversed. But in order to understand what, if, what the effects were of the referendum on society and politics in territories administered by the KRG, we have to understand what led up to this failure and disastrous decision. This was more a referendum on building power and annexing territories, such as Kerukuk and parts of Ninwe, than it was about actual independence. Um, KRG media, as it is in, as prevalent as, as it is in Western, um, Western uh, societies, is owned and managed as it is by the Kurdistan Democratic Party, where some of us are very familiar with many of the news stories that they put out. Um, they spend an awfully lot of time persuading its own Kurdish population how much Western government supported an independent Kurdish state for many years, interviewing lots of people and talking, of, and talking it out. Even Western media was guilty of this. For example, leading up to the referendum, the Washington Post published 15 op-eds by various authors on the same day with a pro-referendum, pro-independence slant. A space for this was created in Western publications, but there was very little space to actually identify the problems that have been existing for many years. The issue with this flexing of propaganda is that it distorts the expectations of local people. In, in some ways, it's a placebo for, all, for unrest, for cynicism, for resentment, and of course, corruption. The Kurdish people themselves for years have been manipulated and lulled into a false sense of security by their own leaders' vanity and greed. The referendum was a political gamble by a leadership that overestimated how strong their hand was and took an opportunity that did not exist. I could go on and talk about any of the following points at length, but as I said, I want, to in, I want to briefly recount some of the things that are submerged in positive spin or the yearning to point to some form of success, rather than its tangibility. ...directly and the subsequent crash in the market. There is endemic corruption, nepotism, the phenomenon of ghost, ghost soldiers which hasn't fully been rectified, um, and which is usually associated with the federal government in Baghdad, is also shared by the KRG, with many commanders and senior figures picking up multiple salaries. The tribal, almost feudal patronage systems enforced all create a chaotic economy, which inspires resentment and uncertainty among the people, and all constituents, that is, not just any one group. To give you an idea of what I mean by this, um, in Ba'athist Iraq, 
40% of the workforce worked in some capacity for the government, um, which is a very high figure. But in the KRG, over 70% of people collect a salary from the governing parties, which is insane. Um, the system of patronage is ubiquitous and determines everything from the very basics, like electricity, water, to livelihood, education, career progression. One prospers primarily by making a political party happy in the KRG, by expressing loyalty to them and excelling at those things, rather than excelling in their chosen field and profession. These are all right realities that have been obscured from everyone that's looking into that society. The, the KRG swears by these patronage systems that enshrine vertical power structures within the territories it governs. Minoritized groups such as the Syrians have consistently expressed a desire for partnership with their neighbors or horizontal relationships of power between us. But we have constantly been exploited and forced into patronage within these vertical systems which, which rob us of our agency, voice, and power. We have never been equal Perhaps maybe in rhetoric sometimes, but others, but others are more equal in practice and enforcement of laws. And on the subject of laws, um, it's very important to, uh, to uh, point some attention to the fact that many cases in land disputes are explored legally in the KRG by the Syrians um, with, with the relevant authorities. But there is no enforcement of the outcome if it is in our favor. This discrimination precipitates a slow ethnic cleansing. And the numbers do not lie. And what I mean by that is when, when a Kurd uses their connections to displace another Kurd from his or her property, despite the terrible act, it's still owned by a Kurd in that the Kurdish character of a particular locality is maintained despite the crime that's been committed. This is not the case for Assyrians. The character of our land is constantly eroded and reclassified when we leave. And so we continue to leave the KRG despite this relative security that's been cited. Because yes, we have um, moved from the Ninwe Plains and fled there, and fled from there north, but that was because we have lots of settlements and people in the north already. Those are ancestral lands. But we continue to leave the KRG despite this because there are conditional freedoms reminiscent of the Ba'ath regime which makes, us, which makes society suffocating for an average thinking and feeling citizen. And it's not only Assyrians who are leaving, a lot of people are leaving. Um, and Western policymakers must accept some, some responsibility for these huge failings. For a very long time, the KRG enjoyed a free pass when it came to, when it, when it come to governance. Every year, the US allocates hundreds of millions of dollars to the KRG to help with projects, to stand up to Peshmerga, to pay salaries, and so on. But one important point that is missing is a will to encourage democracy and institu institution building by enforcing positive conditionalities and protections. What are the consequences if an alignment of interest isn't created here? What is the penalty for rogue behavior, as was the case with the referendum? In some ways, one can argue that the implicit support of the US of Iraq's reclamation of much of the territory it lost to ISIS and then to the KRG was a penalty. But the US has consistently signed off on large annual budget allocations to a fractured KRG government which has not passed a single budget of its own in parliament for years. In that sense, there is no real paper trail. The economy is a shadow. And where are these dollars going? And I'll tell you where, where some of the places it's going to. They're going to fund party political militias, the Peshmerga, which is not a unified force. They are loyal to individual commanders, whilst these token mixed Peshmerga units stay at home in their bases because they're universally untrusted in the field by their superiors. They are going towards KDP occupation of Christian Assyrian towns such as al Qush and Tesqopa, towns with no Kurdish population in the Ninwe Plains, demonstrably against the will of the residents who have expressed themselves repeatedly and have been threatened for doing so by the KDP authorities there. They are going towards the brutalization of public workers and political representatives by hired thugs who assault them if they get out of line. 
They go to the fattening of already rich clans and families, the frustration of ordinary people who just want to live decently, without fear, with a fair salary, with agency, and given respect for who they are. They are going towards the systemic seizure of indigenous people's lands and the normalization of this theft. They are going towards the infiltration into powerful provincial councils, which regulate local politics and dispose and replace officials who do not support a KDP agenda. They go towards lobby lobbying for even more resources to continue these policies. Contrary to some opinions within policy circles, Western nations most certainly do, did not and do not take a back seat here. They are not passive. This is the type of society the US and other Western governments have been actively incubating by, allowing, by allocating power without helping define it in the interests of all. This money is actively used by the KRG to weaken and splinter our community, and it continues to do so. Western states effectively punish us twice for this, first by their allocation of power and resources in this way, and then our suffering and splintering under it. And I repeat, the US and other states must take some responsibility for this. Now, after the referendum, Western nations advised, which Western nations advised against was undertaken, a narrative was spun which stipulated the US and others of, ab of abandoning and betraying the KRG um, in large sections of uh, the media. Um, as part of the response to this, according to a story in the Iraqi oil report, the KDP sent uh, its oil minister, Ashti Horami, to Moscow to fresh out a deal with Russian giant, oil giant Rosneft, which is a um, huge player in the oil industry. And they have since decided to invest billions of dollars in production sharing contracts in these territories after the withdrawal of some US oil companies given the growing risk and insecurity. This pivot towards Russia here was undertaken deliberately with mutual interests in mind. I personally saw photos of angry Kurdish civilians holding portraits of Barzani next to Putin and in public gatherings following the referendum and their angry protesting. It was rather strange, strange, but in the context of the wider region, it wasn't surprising. Um, the long-term effects of this pivot towards Russia by the KRG are unclear, but in the years to come, Western governments must be awake to it and address it in present and future policy making. I just want to conclude by saying a few more things. Um, a re-evaluation of the relationship between Western governments and the KRG must take place if policy makers are truly interested in the values of democratization, liberty, plular, plur, uh, plurality, and mm -hmm. stability. We all want success stories after the horror and misery which has engulfed Iraq in the last few decades, but it is dangerous to believe in one before it has proven it in real terms to its commitment to these principles. Repeated apologies for not being perfect, usually offered by the KRG, are not good enough because that's what we have been receiving for over a decade. We should not nurture uncritical reward systems in our policy making. Here, nearly all of the leverage is with Western governments, and it's now time for them to get more engaged in the detail of these issues in order to solve them in a meaningful way. The US and other states that have thus far implemented almost no conditionalities for their material support in this context um, they do this with no conditionalities, yet the KRG implements its own vast list of conditionalities onto the population as authority over, using the resources provided to them by Western states. This is not right, nor is it sensible or sustainable. It represents sloppy and discriminatory, discriminatory policy making. There must be a change of course. Um, and lastly, I just want to, I just want to emphasize. Um, kind of like a bird's eye view of Assyrians in Iraq um, and give some perspective on that very briefly. When, when Iraq wins, Assyrians win the least. And when Iraq loses, Assyrians lose the most. This speaks of a system, both in Iraq and the KRG, which does not practice or enshrine quality, equality as a guiding principle, both in law and its enforcement. And it's our job, everyone here, to change that. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, we are going to turn it over.